Wakery, Berry, Loxton, Marook, Glossop and Renmark. All these Riverland towns once had a railway connection to Adelaide. And it all started here at the heart of the system at Karoonda. We're going to go exploring these Murray Mallee lines today and show you what remains in 2022. trail out here is more like a, a dirt bike trail. It's just a, a sandy path through the Mallee. Um, but yeah, there's obviously little bits and pieces remaining. So here we are at uh, Marama. We are out into dirt road territory now. storm with heavy rain meant I had to hit the highway to reach Pabinga. Right, well I made it to Pabinga again, um, out here just two kilometres from the Victorian border. This line closed in 1990 and ran 106 kilometres from Karunda. folks because coming up is day two, Karunda to Loxton and Barmara. Halidon is a perfect example of the way the railways grew the uh, Murray Mallee region. Uh, they were essential for communication um, back in the day when they were built, they were built sometimes 30 or 40 kilometers apart and they were built to connect a string of villages like this one. Yurta Grain Terminal. Once uh, the Loxton Grain Terminal was in the centre of town but the line was cut back to the grain uh, storage facility here. Uh, the last grain train left here in 2015. Uh, it's interesting that they should have a yard limit of 15 kilometres an hour because I reckon that was probably the speed limit along the entire line for most of its later years. But anyway, we're going to head past here and head into Loxton in just a second and have a look around there and see if we can find anything that remains of the railway line through the town. Cheers. I guess some of the uh, stockyards where you can see some of the infrastructure that is still there. There's some stockyards just over the hill. Looks like it was a raised siding, whereas uh, this uh, main piece of rail that still leads into Loxton is down below that livestock siding. Now 
is something I've never seen before. This is the lightly laid uh, 41 pound line with the steel sleepers laid across the sandy soil and it changes over into the 60 pound line laid on wooden sleepers and ballast. It's an indication of the way the lines were originally laid and the way they were upgraded as time went by. I'm here at the Loxton Historical Village. This is a uh, museum and historical display on the banks of the Murray in the town of Loxton. It's well worth coming down to the riverfront and checking out. Now they've got heaps to see, including this uh, old RX class engine, number 55 from the Islington Works. It's the kind of engine that did millions of kilometres on the Murray Mallee railways. These guys have done a great job collecting uh, history and dragging back some of the buildings and some of the signs from all across the Murray and we can immerse ourselves in even more of the railway history of the Murray Mallee here in Loxton. So bring the family and enjoy. back to Peruna to rejoin the Barmara line. Well, we've made it to Merribah, not far from the Victorian border. This was originally the terminus of the Brown's Well line way back in 1913-14. It was extended to Paringa and then finally Renmark and Barmara. So this would have been the way that you needed to come through from a lot of the central Riverlands towns. Um, it's characteristic of oh, a lot of the towns in the Murray Mallee. Um, you've got a couple of massive silos over there where the railway ran past, generally a single line because trains would run one day on a Tuesday, for example, and run the other way on a Wednesday. Um, still a lot of the buildings remaining. Not sure how many of them are abandoned. There's a few people around. Um, there's remains of a general store. Uh, there's the pool. Um, there's another general store and uh, perhaps a motor mechanic, which uh, possibly doubled as the um, post office. Uh, a thin strip of bitumen in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna continue on exploring this line all the way up to Paringa and around to Renmark and the rest of the Riverland. So uh, I hope you're enjoying it and keep on following the railways here on Outdoor Stuck. You know, it's um, towns like Taldra well, I wouldn't really call it a town, it's a bit of a settlement and you know the drill. It's got a post office box and a hall, a place that was probably once a general store and a mechanic and a school and everything all at once. Um, but as you're driving out here on the, the undulating Mallee Plains, um, you, you start to learn that you can spot uh, the next town or settlement from usually a few kilometres away because you can see the silos uh, looming on the horizon over the uh, the wheat fields so um, it, it's emblematic of what this railway was built for um, they were built to haul the wheat that the settlers came out here to plant uh, back to Adelaide anyway we're nearly there uh, this is Taldra we're just about to hit Yamba uh, if I can find it I'll try and show you where the uh, branch line uh, once uh, went off to Murtho um, in anticipation of construction of the Chewila Dam and not long after that we're going to get to the Paringa Bridge which is probably the one major engineering feature of the Murray Mallee Line so that's well worth seeing.
We've made it to the Paringa Bridge over the River Murray between uh, Paringa and Renmark. It's one of the few lifting bridges still crossing the River Murray. It was completed in 1927 and it was only then that the line all the way from Karunda could cross the River Murray and head across the uh, River Flats to Renmark. Uh, this is the site of the old Renmark Railway Yards. You know, I've driven past this spot for 20, 25 years, I reckon, and just saw this old crane here and never really took notice of anything else that was here at the time. Who knows, there might have been rail back then. But it's only been now that I've started exploring and there's just so little left of it all. So what I'm trying to do is preserve what is left, maybe try and show a little bit of the shape of it as it exists in the towns these days. So we're between Renmark and Berry on the Sturt Highway. Um, I always knew this section was going to be a bit difficult because by the looks of Google Maps, there's not much to see of this line. I guess it was the earliest part to get uh, taken up. Um, also, uh, plenty of it has been built over by all the new industrial and commercial development uh, surrounding Renmark and Berry in the last uh, 40 years or so since the line was closed, um, so this might be a very short section. As you can see here by Google Earth, there's literally nothing left in Bury at all. I even stayed in the town for two nights, but I couldn't find anything. Okay, well, we've made it to the end of the line at Barmara, um, and like so many other lines, um, there's next to no trace of anything remaining. In fact, um, what was remaining has now been taken up by industrial land and new housing developments. So this was where the old railway yards were, um, and perhaps a station and all that back behind me, but I don't have any history on that. All I know is the location. Um, this line from Berry um, passed through such productive country. Um, it passed the, the Berry Estates Winery, the old Berry Fruit Juice Factory, uh, snaked through the vineyards. The vineyards have even expanded and taken over some of the old um, uh, route of the railway. The trip from Barmer to Adelaide for a regular passenger was about 11 and a half hours. Now, given that I can get from Barmer to Adelaide more likely in about two, two and a half hours by car, it's little wonder that the railway was closed and the highways took over. So that's it for the Barmer line. We're now going to go trace the Marook line or the Yinkani line, um, which headed back down to Wanby. Then we'll be back in Karunda again and back up to Waikiri to trace that line. So stay tuned.
We're here back at Karunda uh, two days later. We've done the big circle around the Riverland lines and now we're about to cover the last one, the Wakery line. Uh, right behind me here you can see the uh, Loxton line railway crossing um, and just to my right behind me here you can see uh, the broad gauge lines that remain across the road to start the Wakery line. This 119 kilometre long line closed in 1994. We're going to head up to Wakery and see what remains of it. Well, here we are in Galga. Um, once again, one of those deserted villages with nothing but a silo and a stock loading wrap. Um, again, like these towns, there used to be so much going on. Apparently this place had two motor mechanics, a grocer, a general store, a rifle club, um, a district hall. There's now a country fire service here still. These places would have been busy back in the day before bulk grandling of hay and grain. Right, well, we've made it to Wakery. Thanks for taking along with me on the journey. Um, we are standing on the cliff top edge right by the railway silos where the Wakery railway station once was. There's absolutely nothing remaining now aside from that rail remnant that you would have seen uh, in the street there leading across to the Nippies factory. Look, I'm not a historian. Um, I'm not a former railway engine driver. I'm just a bloke with a couple of cameras who enjoys exploring and following railway history. So if I missed anything or you didn't like anything, please let me know in the comments. Or if you did like it, hit the like button and let me know what you liked. There was lots of shots that I thought I might get that I didn't get. Um, and there were shots that um, I um, got that I didn't think I'd get. So, you know, things vary uh, once you're out in the field. But no regrets because a lot of these places that I've been to are so out of the way that it's very unlikely that I'll make it back again. But I will continue exploring South Australian railways. I think next up might be the York Peninsula Railways. Um, so if you did like this video and you want to see more, then subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified as soon as I release them. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.